Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, want to win a motor and a boat? Dom's Dacia needs a home. Fallow Fawn, Roy Lupton's learning on the hoof. Down the range, we're joining schools for the Ash Burton Rifle Shooting Competition at Bisley. First, I'm at the Great Yorkshire Show because I thought I was going to be making an item about repeal. But no banana. Some people here are gutted. Dismay. Dismay. You know, um, gobsmoked, just like Liverpool getting beat by Everton. Some are resigned. Disappointed, not surprised. Some are making plans. Regroup, um, double our efforts. Some think of it as a bit like cricket. It's quite an interesting dynamics we got here, because we thought one thing, and the SNP have just thrown a bit of a googly. Was that our own Tim Pilbeam? I thought he lives in Sussex. And some, delightfully, have no clue what is going on. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it was all going to be so neat. Tony Blair took 700 hours of parliamentary time, personally ignored the biggest peacetime March Britain had ever seen, and had to invoke the Parliament Act to get Hunting with Hounds banned. David Cameron was going to counter this in a short morning's work, at least by looking after his fox hunting mates. Of course, Cameron didn't please the antis. They have had a tough week. If people understood wildlife management, as we have to with a whole range of animals, for disease control, for protecting vulnerable species, for biodiversity... I believe it's a pretense. I think you're a bunch of lying bastards. Uh, well, that's very nice of you. Halfway through the first day of the Great Yorkshire Show, we got that email from Countryside Alliance Chief Executive Barney White Spunner. The Scottish Nationalist MPs at Westminster were going to use us, the hunting community, he told us gloomily, to make a political point about devolution. Cameron's vote would be delayed. So, what happens next? Come to the Great Yorkshire Show and you want to find out about hunting? First port of call is the Countryside Alliance. We haven't lost the vote because we didn't go for the vote, and actually we're in no worse position. If Cameron had got the statutory instrument through and increased the number of hounds you are allowed to use on a fox from two to lots, he would not even have pleased all the hunt supporters. I've made a couple of friends here. Some people feel these guys may have got left out in the last week. Uh, of course, and unfortunately, with the way the hunting act was drafted, we've been completely out in the cold, and if it wasn't for our friends in Ireland inviting us across there to course, then there just simply wouldn't be any coursing at all. Since the end of coursing with greyhounds, the media used the word to describe lurcher work. The image that's portrayed now is of people breaking the law, trespassing, um, and, and we don't want to be associated with that. We've tried to stick together the various branches of field sports, and obviously nothing but full repeal really works for any of us. We feel as if we're just a working class side of the countryside alliance. And I feel as if my, my opinion and other people's opinion is that they, they haven't done enough for us, the course and fraternity that is. You know, we're, um, good luck to the fox hunting if we can get it through. Leaving aside the infighting, nobody is happy with the SNP for playing political poker with the livelihoods of thousands of people in the English and Welsh countryside. And nor is there much love for the Conservatives in this mess either. I sort of get the impression that the Conservative Party have used this to out the SNP. Is my overriding feeling. To some extent, we've probably been the political football in yes. the last two days. Some of the hunting fraternity are now saying they're actually not going to be pouring Scotch whisky at the forthcoming meets, at the opening meets. They're probably going to be pouring Welsh whisky, Irish whisky, or even English whisky. The Great Yorkshire Show is a major agricultural hunting, shooting, and land earning event, and with the sun shining, it feels a long way devolved from London. There are illustrious people here. His Royal Highness and, just visible, hers. It feels like life is going on as normal. We want to get rid of the ban. We want fox hunters, stag hunters, beaglers, mink hunters, coursers, terriermen and everyone else in our great, big, fun-loving, often slightly dysfunctional field sports world to be able to wake up in the mornings without the fear of arrest. Just to show that ranting pop stars don't really change anything out here where it counts, these are the results of the 2015 Beagle Bitch Class. Now to our own Silver Fox, who's been known to have been pursued by a hound or two. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump.
This is Field Sports Channel News. A group of farmers in one state in Australia are so jealous of the fox bounty system being adopted by the neighbouring state, they've started their own. The six farmers in the Colcairn District, New South Wales, are paying a pest controller a $10 per fox bounty throughout their lambing season to shoot the pest. The farms are located less than 60k from the Victoria border, a state where its government foots the $10 bill for each fox scalp delivered to collection centres. The World Bank has approved a grant to support elephant hunting. The World Bank is paying a $46 million grant to Mozambique, one of the world's poorest countries, to improve tourism, and $700,000 of that has been earmarked to bolster trophy hunting of lions and elephants. The bank says that hunting animals increases populations and prevents poaching, which is causing the elephants to decline. However, that is not stopping the antis in both government and the media. The European Union has banned the import of elephant hunting trophies because it says it will reduce poaching. And this new film aims to lift the lid on the trade in canned hunts for lions. The SNP has started the last phase of its plan to break up the Scottish estates. The Scottish Government has unveiled new laws that will forcibly strip landowners of their property if they fail to pass four vague tests. One of the tests is that a compulsory buyout is in the public interest. Advanced ticket sales to the CLA Game Fair 2015 ends on the 20th of July. Visitors that haven't yet bought tickets for this year's fair at Harwood House near Leeds on the 29th of July to the 2nd of August can pick them up with 15% discounts on gate prices. Visit bit.ly forward slash 2015 Game Fair. And finally, Basque has marked the contribution of ex-MP Martin Salter to shooting by presenting him with a framed picture of one of his favourite species, the barbel. Martin, who presents Fishing Britain on Fieldsports Channel, works as National Campaigns Coordinator for the Angling Trust. The citation for the award included Martin's successful campaigns to exempt certain breeds of gone dogs from the ban on tail docking and abolishing the game licence and licences to deal in game. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now to the wilds of the southeast of England, where Roy Lupton has adopted a fallow fawn. Ah. At home with the Luptons, we find a new addition to the house. Kutch, meaning cuddle in Welsh, is a five-week-old fallow fawn. Little does she realise the significance of being in such surroundings, but she is very much part of the family. She was brought to us by one of my friends that uh, manages a deer park. Unfortunately, she, uh, she got lifted up and she, she was still covered in afterbirth. People th thought that uh, she'd been injured. And uh, a friend phoned me up and said, would we like to rear her because he wasn't sure what was going to happen to her because the people had already picked her up and played about with her. So he brought her over. She obviously hadn't had her first feed because she was off her feet. We finally got some colostrum into her, started feeding her and, uh, and now she's well away and racing around the paddocks. So she's, uh, she's living in with the dogs at the moment and racing about and uh, yeah, hopefully she'll uh, be a bit of fun. I think she'll, she'll do quite well. Unfortunately, the dogs are using her as a food dispenser. They've quickly cottoned on that a lick on the behind means there's a few droppings to supplement the diet. She is growing fast and Roy is learning a lot from the relationship that may assist with the stalking. The most interesting thing is watching her with recognition. When you get other people walking in, initially she'll come up um, as if she's greeting us, then realise it's not us and then disappear off again. From watching deer and, and learning and, and being with deer, it gives you a completely different perception than you get with a, a lifetime of hunting them. And the only other, the only other problem I can envisage now is, you know, I can, I can certainly see me hanging up my stalking rifles in the very near future. So what will become of young Kutch? Roy has plans, but it depends on how the training goes. Watch this space. Dr. Doolittle strikes again. In a minute, how to win a duster with hidden extras first. More action from Bisley. 
If you are a British kid who likes the idea of shooting rifles, the chances are you will end up here, a big open field in Surrey. Every year for more than a century, 600 teenagers come for four days to shoot thousands of rounds from full-bore rifles. Here they are in 1900. Here they are today. It is the Wimbledon of the shooting world. Yes, and in fact, of course, uh, this championship used to be held at Wimbledon on the Rangers. Today is uh, what's colloquially known as Ashburton Day, and it is the culmination of four days of shooting for uh, all the cadets, 43 schools in all, and they will be shooting for a number of competitions, but the prestigious one, uh, and the one which everybody wants to win, is the Ashburton Shield. Those schools field a team of eight people, both shooting and wind coaching, that is, working out where the wind is blowing and adjusting the sights of the shooters. The shooters use open sights, and the ranges are a massive 300, 500 and 600 yards, more than half a kilometre in new money, and they get no help from teacher. They're not allowed to take any part at all in the coaching or anything to do with the management of the team. They are sitting behind there, chewing their fingernails, trying desperately to see how far ahead they are or how many points they need to get at the next distance. One of those teachers is Nigel Ball from defending champion Wellington College and he is already making excuses. We lost a lot of senior shooters last year, um, 10 in fact, uh, and they were most of the eight that won. Uh, so we've, we've had to concentrate on our youngsters this year and we've got nine under 14 shooting. I mean, this is a massive event. Uh, the Ashburton is revered amongst public schools and it is a massive prize to take home. The competitors here range in age from 14 to 19 and there are a lot of them in the various cadet units around the UK. I can't give you an exact figure, but there are some nine, 10,000 cadets shooting above the basic level. Every cadet is supposed to shoot. They may start on air rifles and then move on to two twos, and then they can shoot the, the cadet GP rifle, the L98A2, which is a service rifle. In fact, it's a single shot self loading rifle, a version of the, the Army's SA80. And then those that are going on to a higher level will come and shoot, as we have been today, and shoot the cadet target rifle. Uh, the Ashburton started in 1861. It was to do with European politics. Napoleon III was getting very restive uh, in the 1850s. And then there was an attempted assassination with uh, materials which proved to have originated in Birmingham. And Victorian England, uh, with 1815 very much in mind, got very twitched indeed. And within a few months, the... National Rifle Association uh, and the um, Territorial Army and also school cadet corps were all founded and this is a direct result of that. As you can see looking around the range it's a very convivial atmosphere, old boys come and meet up, happy new years are exchanged uh, and people, international cadets and schools are here. It's, uh, it's a great day for schools and for cadet shooting in general. It's the, 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 the benchmark and the best way to exhibit everything that shooting has to offer for schools. The Ashburton is for independent schools. Does that mean that shooting is an exclusive sport? NRA Chief Executive Andrew Mercer says no. Last week we had the cadet forces here and there were a lot of uh, state school cadet forces shooting here. So there's waves of, uh, of youngsters actually come shooting at Disney. Today this is primarily the, the privately educated, the private schools. Um, but that's just the nature of this particular day's competition. It's a competition. Peter has been doing his rounds and picking up on how the various school teams are doing. Um, well, I still reckon that the Scottish schools are having uh, quite a good shoot. Um, Overtree, they've had a really good shoot in some of the smaller teams, um, but they've fallen off in the Ashburton 8. So let's meet one of those Scottish schools. This is Gregor from Dollar Academy, whose school has come to Surrey all the way from Clackmanninshire. It's been a hectic day, anything could really happen. Um, Which schools are fancy? Oh, I don't know. Um, Say Dollar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is, however, not going well for Nigel. Well, we were 11 ahead of you and you've taken us apart at 500. Literally taken us apart. The lad Nigel is talking to is from Victoria College, which has come here from Jersey. Well, I didn't realise we, we were anywhere near until I just came off um, and were told that there's a rumour we might be close to it. Um, but obviously, if we can do it for the first time since 1961, that'd be amazing. A lot of preparation goes into teams' entries to the Ashburton. We practice uh, three, five and six at Crabbe, which is our like, local range. Um, so we practice there 
every Sunday, but that's with TR rifles. Um, so we do the CTR rifles. Uh, we've, uh, we only practice around probably five times for it with the CTR. When it comes to it, the prize does not go to Victoria. It goes to Ellesmere College from Shropshire. This is quite a long way from the Scottish victory that Peter predicted. Time for him to eat humble pie? Up to a point, yes, but dollar second place. Fettys and Glasgow take top two in the Ashburton Fours, but what a great result for Ellesmere. That is a really good score. They um, only entered two days before the meeting started because they didn't know they'd get enough people. So they've had a really good, really good day. And I'd just like to mention the Oratory School. They have uh, taken the cadet fours and pairs, so that's showing that they've got strength in their youth. They also took most of the service rifle events earlier this week on the Monday, and they've just won the Spencer Mellish, which is a self-coach shoot. So they have had a really good <laughs> Ashburton as well. So, with thousands of people turning up for the Imperial meeting held every year in July at Bisley, why does the NRA bother with school shooting? Uh, it's a huge shot window for us, particularly with the young, that's for sure. Uh, school shooting has been a natural feeder into sort of shooting for life for most members, and uh, this is a very important part of the school's meeting. One of the barriers to school kids shooting is the cost. Every time you pull the trigger, it sort of costs you a Mars bar. And there are a lot of kids out there who say they'd rather have the mask bar. The great thing about shooting is that uh, it's a sport that you can do for life. It's gender neutral, it's physical ability neutral, it's uh, age neutral. And if people can get into it at a young age, they can learn to love it. And it's something that you can put down and then pick up at a later date. We actually offer free membership to anybody under the age of 21. We give substantial discounts, we offer a lot of grants, we offer free interest free loans to buy rifles. There's a great deal of effort that we're putting into to promote young shooting because once we've caught them at the age of 14, we think actually we're sowing seeds that will generate and germinate and, uh, and, uh, and grow for, you know, for the rest of their lives. If you are at school and want to take up shooting along with tens of thousands of kids around the UK, join your local cadets either at school or Google Army Cadets, Sea Cadets or Air Cadets and your county. Or simply get in touch with the British National Rifle Association via its website nra.org.uk. Good to dismiss. Now, shooting vehicles. Some are born great, others are made great. Our global hunting survey revealed that 91% of our viewers use a 4x4. But an off-road vehicle means different things to different people. Here's the nostalgic. A 40-year-old Land Rover. These days, character taking over from ability. Our special edition Mitsubishi Browning Outlander brings us right up to date with its off-road and motorway appeal. And the choice has never been greater for those wanting a wannabe off-roader offering ground clearance, but not the power going to all four corners. However, the Dacia Duster can call itself a 4x4, and sporting shooter editor Dom Holtham has added a few more bits to make it even less street and a bit more field. Okay, so you may remember a couple of years ago we managed to persuade uh, Great Wall to give us a truck to give away, and we managed to uh, talk to the very kind folks at Dacia. Uh, into giving us one of their duster four-wheel drives um, as a basis for a competition. Similar idea, we take one of their cars, we make it a bit more shooter-friendly, uh, and uh, here it is, pretty much finished now. So the idea for this one was, was slightly different. We've, we've taken a car that's a good all-round family car, not a pickup truck. This is the Dacia Duster. It's a top-of-the-range DCI 1.5 Laureate model. It's four-wheel drive. Uh, it comes with all the kind of mod cons you might expect. It's got uh, sat-nav, it's got electric windows, air conditioning, uh, it's got steering wheel mounted controls, you can plug your iPod in. It's a really nice car, six-speed gearbox, um, 50 mpg, very practical for the family, etc, etc. Um, we've kind of pimped it a little bit to make it more shooter-friendly. We fitted some chunky grabber all-terrain tyres for it to give it a bit more kind of performance in the rough stuff um, and you may notice that on the top we've got this beauty this is the brilliant boat box looks like a normal roof box you can use it like a normal roof box but actually stored in here we'll show you in a second there are oars there's a seat there's a transom board for an outboard the whole top lifts off and you can turn it into a boat so if you're into wild fowling or fishing ideal the other thing that we thought always hate traveling with guns when you're not quite sure about security so we've got the brilliant chaps at Lintran to perform a bit of a transformation in the back of the, the vehicle. So we've got 
underneath the flat boot floor, we've taken out the spare wheel well and we fitted this hidden gun safe. So we've got a nice little box for your shotgun, slides out of sight, put the top down. It's got two seven lever locking points, it disappears under the boot floor and you can go away and make sure that your, your guns are safe while you're, while you're travelling with them. We've also fitted the excellent Napier Auto Click, that's part of the package. So if you're into your deer stalking, clicks in here, you can hang your deer off the back of it if you want to go and do a Gralic. Um, so yeah, all in all, it's a brilliant prize, it's free to enter the competition. All you need to do is either get a copy of the magazine or go to the Sporting Shooter website, www.sportingshooter.co.uk. Simple question, free prize draw, you've got until the end of July in order to enter. The vehicle will be at the CLA Game Fair, so if you want to come and see it there, there will be one last chance to enter it there. Uh, and if, frankly, if you're into free stuff, then get a copy of the magazine because we're giving away a Blazer R8 professional success, we're giving away tickets to the Game Fair, we're giving away a lockaway gun safe and we're giving away the truck. So get in there, get some free stuff. So to enter the competition you need to go to sportingshooter.co.uk and to find out more about the Mitsubishi Browning range go to bit.ly slash Browning Cars. Thank you Dom, see you at the CLA Game Fair. Right now, hunting YouTube, here's more from the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Trigger Pull TV sends in his film an afternoon rabbit hunt. He is out with a CZ452 and 22 to keep the rabbit numbers in check. Off to South Africa, Christian Corti submits his speedy film English Setter on Grey Wing Partridge in the Karoo, which is a promo for his guiding business. And Brit Johnny Ellsmore has been on a shooting holiday in the USA. He sends me his gopher hunting films, but exploding gophers I have seen. I like this one. No coyotes shot, but lots of tips on how they shoot them plus a black bear. Waffenland TV is out after Black Forest Chamois in this film. It is in German, but non-German speakers will get the idea. American hunting star Keith Warren travels to Alabama's Duck Springs Plantation. Located in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, famed for its whitetail hunting, there are also some good fallow deer. Down under next for the Hunters Club Duck Shooting Sneak Peek. It is a snippet of some of the duck shooting action captured earlier this year, which will feature in Series 2 of the Hunters Club in 2016 on New Zealand TV. In Sweden, Jakt Faber, which means hunting fever, is getting all feverish about the deer season which gets underway on the 16th of August with elk hunting starting on the 1st of October. Here is a film the Swedes say to get you in the mood. And finally hog hunting with US military heroes. Military Arms Channel joins with Optics Planet and Hero Hunt to go pig hunting in Georgia with and here is a great name Squeal Team 6. Hoo ha! That's it for this week if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top 8 send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv well, if you don't like those, how about this? It's how to throw an axe. We're at the Oxford Gun Company's first open day of 2015. Plus, it's the Rosini Challenge, plus the Browning Rabbit Mania. Click on the link on the screen for more. We are back next week. If you haven't done so already, please click to subscribe or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about this programme. Field Sports Britain at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.